many of you guys know the story about the turtle and the rabbit? The race one, yeah. Everybody knows it, right? It's a really well-known story, right? But I'm still going to share it with you guys today. So yeah, let's go through the story today. Um, so there's a rabbit and a turtle. They have a race. Like it starts at a, on a very, very long road. And the winner will be the one who reach the finish line, the first. So when the race starts, the rabbit just rush fast, as fast as he's possible, like an era. When he reached the half point, like he realized that, oh, I'm so fast, you know, I'm so good at running, so I can just take a rest, because it's so hot, I'm so tired. So then he took a nap. The reason why he took a nap because like, he believed that even you know, the turtle passed by him like, while he's sleeping. He could still be able to you know, rush through the finish line first ahead of the turtle. But when he wake up, he can see no turtle around him. So he was a little bit worried. And then he ran as fast as possible to the finish line. And surprisingly, he sees the turtle is waiting there waiting for him, and smile, say, hey, you are so slow, yeah. So, I mean, it's a really good story. I love it really much. I mean, the weak person overcome the disadvantage by putting effort, by working hard, right? It's a really good story. But what if we think about the story in another way? What if the turtle loses the game? That's the question I want you guys to think for a while, you know, during when I was talking. So, yeah. And then I was started talking about my personal stories. So, I have been haunted by a ghost for four years. Four years. And uh, it's a really naughty ghost. I couldn't see him when I was doing my homework, reading my books going to class, paying attention, taking notes, I can't see him. But as soon as I, you know, grab my phone, sit on the sofa, lie down, lay down, and start playing games or watching videos, he comes up to me and says, hey, brother, do you think it is a good time to take a rest? Yeah, really scary. I mean, really, really scary. <laughs> And yeah, so I cannot do anything for fun or interesting or really get relaxed because, you know, the ghost is always hanging around, hanging around. And the ghost is math. <laughs> How could math be my ghost? How could math be a scary, naughty ghost that, you know, always hanging around me starts when I was in elementary school? So math wasn't a ghost when I was still in first grade, in elementary school in China. When I was six years old, I was in first grade, and, my, and other people tell me that, you know, you, would be, you must be a good student. And in order to be a good student, you have to be good at everything. Yeah, everything. Means that you, get, you have to get like good grades on all subjects, Chinese, English, Math, physics, biology, I mean, all the things you, you do in, in, in school. You have to get straight A's on that. And you have to be good at you know, playing instruments, playing sports, you know, be brave to speak in public, be really confident to help other people. So I remember that. Okay, I'm going to be a good student, so I'm going to get a perfect grade on all subjects. Yes. And Everything was fine, except math. I don't know why, maybe because some, you know, IQ problem or brain structure problem. I wasn't really good at math compared to other subjects. It always took more time for me to, you know, finish my math homework. At first it's 10 minutes, and then 20 minutes, and 30 minutes, hour, two hours, you know, move on and on, but I mean, after I finish, after my, you know, putting time in that, finish my homework, doing reviews, I can always, always get a good grade on that. So I tell myself, okay, it's fine. As long as I work hard, 
I got good grade on math, so it's not a big problem. But things didn't work well for all the time. My hard working didn't pay off for all the time. Just like the turtle in the second scenario, I failed badly. So that was at the end of my high school, no, middle school, 15 years old. I got a F on my transcript, on math class. At first, it's an A minus, and then B plus, B, B minus, C plus, and you know, gradually become an F. Big red F on the transcript. It means a lot to me. What does it mean? It means that you know, I'm bad at math. I didn't have a chance to go to a good high school in China. It means that like, my hard working is nothing. It can't get me back. The, it can't give me the good grade I want, I always want. So then, at the end of my middle school year and the eve of my high school year, math become a ghost. Always comes. It comes when I playing games, comes when I being lazy, it comes when I, you know, just think school is boring all the time. One sentence. Hey, brother, do you think it's a good time to take a rest now? Forget about your math? Yeah. I was really, it's really annoying to have a ghost around you, so I decided to, you know, I, I have to be good at math. I'm going to ace in math. I'm going to put all the efforts for all the cost to get a good grade in math, to get away this annoying, annoying ghost. That's what I did. I think I successfully did something in math, yeah. And uh, it's really feeling good to get good grades and achieve something in high school. But I just realized the ghost doesn't go away, even at this moment, at the end of my high school year, it doesn't go away. I start to think, to think about it, like, why, why, I, I think I already, like, be kind of like good students, good math students, but why the ghost is still around me? And then I figure out, okay, it's not a problem of math, it's a problem of myself. It's the problem, it's the trap of obsession. So, what is obsession? Obsession, like, is really similar to dream, but the difference is the dream is the things you hold in your hand that can, like, make you to get progress. But obsession is not the things. So, think things in, the, in this way. So, like, when you are unable to get something, what will you do? You got three ways, basically. The first one, just, you know, I don't care about it, I just give it up, I just, yeah. And the second one, put it in your mind and say, you know, I work hard to get that. But you don't tell yourself you have to get these things you can't get for all the time. And the third one, you write it on the paper, stick it to the ceiling, stare at it for all the time, and tell yourself, don't forget these things you were unable to get. The first one, I mean, giving up, giving nothing. The second one, remember it, you know, encouraging yourself to make progress, that's dream. And third one, yeah, obviously is obsession. You are obsessed with the things you can get. But, you know, sometimes you can make some progress from both dream and obsession. So some people will, may ask like, so, as long as I can get something from it. So what's the difference? Why should I care about obsession and dream? It's really hard to explain, so I'm trying to generalize it with the metaphors. So dream is like, you know, it's like a torch you had, like when you're walking in a really cold evening. That's like so dark outside, you cannot see anything, and it's the wind is so strong, and you feel cold. It's freezing outside. The torch, it provides you light and heat, warm your body, and like, you know, telling you to move forward, move forward, you'll be fine, even though you're trying to give up. 
And then finally, maybe you can reach the finish line. But what about obsession? Obsession is also fire, but it's not fi it's, it is not the fire on the torch. It is the fire on your hand. So like it burns you, like it hurts you, like it'll make you scream, it's like so hard, it's so bad. And you rush forward because you're trying to do something to distract yourself, to stop thinking about the, the, the I mean, the fire on your hand, so, so frightening. And then finally you will reach the finish line maybe, with, with scars and exhaustion, it's retired. So, I mean, it's, I think it's really obvious to, to, to figure out that which way is better, dream or obsession. I mean, torch or fire on your hand. Just like for me, I mean, I didn't do well in math. So I thought that I can make math my dream to encourage me to move forward to be a better student. But I didn't realize that math has actually become an obsession. Obsession I'm just obsessed with, things that I'm obsessed with, I would just, you know, to get rid of it. That's what I did. I spent all my attention on math, on the tests, on class notes, on math thing problems. I mean, I just can't stop thinking about it. I just can't think about it. That gives me a good grade, good things on my transcript good achievement in club activities. But is that all? After getting all these achievements, what did I really have? I didn't enjoy the process of solving problems. I didn't enjoy the process of learning new things. I just didn't enjoy the fantastic experience the math can give me. What's more, it's made me to be afraid of math be afraid of the things I used to like. I was just like a driver, you know, driving a car on a long road for a road trip. You know, put your eyes, put my eyes on the road for all the time. It's a good thing to do because, you know, for safety. But it's a road trip. The point is to see the things you can see when you are driving. I missed the point. I didn't see the sightseeing on both sides of the road. So for me, as long as I give up, you know, the idea is to be perfect, to be a perfect student or acing in math, I can get rid of the trap of obsession. That's easy for me. But for, your, but for you guys, you guys have different things, have different wanted, have different things, you want different things, you have dreams, you have a future to fight for, you want different things. What do you want? Could be money, could be college, could be friends, could be lovers, could be family. I don't know. Everybody has, has his own problem and his own needs. So I hope like you guys can start to think of something that you can get and you really want to get. Is that, re is that a thing really, I mean, necessary to you? Is that a good thing to just chasing after it? Is that a dream or is it an obsession? So I could not, I can't give the answer to you guys because it's so complicated. But I hope you guys can start to think about it after I finish my talk. And you know, some days we will find the answer to it. So before I end my speech, let's go back to the story of the turtle. So, I mean, the race to turtle is important because, you know, the rabbit humiliate him, saying that he's slow. So the point of the race for a turtle is his pride, right? But his pride will be defended as long as he put efforts in it, as long as he try to do the things he can do before. But if the eyes of the turtle are covered by the desire to win, to, of victory. What will happen? Maybe the turtle will run, you know, try too hard, put too much effort in it, and then just die on the road. So, 
That's all I have today. So thank you guys.